Good morning, welcome to this video. Today it's a spread review of the M4A1 75W, obviously the one in the Chinese tree, because this is the only one that actually has this unique variant of tank. So the M4A1 75 is essentially just a 76mm M4A1 with the 76mm being replaced by a 75mm, that's to put it simply. Nothing else changes, it's pretty much just the gun. And well, the gun is a bit of a bad stock grind at 4.0, especially when you get up to it, because um, you can fight Churchill Mark 7s in this thing, and it's not a very good day at the office, is all I'll say. So the tank itself, from a historical standpoint, I believe this served in Taiwan, and essentially, well, I believe it's a Taiwanese tank, um, essentially, they use, they use these as just armored support vehicles because, well, they didn't really have anything else. Obviously with the M18, well, they had also the M18 and stuff like that, which is when the uh, the Type 64 project came around and all that jazz. The vehicle itself just wasn't needed. So the M4A 175 and Warthund that comes in at about rate 4.0, and to be honest, I thought that was a bit over the top. But now I see why, let's just say. So obviously, we'll go over the armour in a second, but obviously I'm going to need to talk about the tank itself. Obviously, I haven't actually finished fully spading this thing. However, with the recent micro patches that have been going on, I'm not taking that bloody risk, is all I'll say. I've almost done it, and everything else that um, needs to be done is, well, it's miscellaneous and doesn't really help the vehicle all that much. Obviously, the smoke rounds do, but... Everything else that is important to the tank apart from the tracks is pretty much done, so I can give it a good assessment. And even then, I've spaded the M4A176 W, so I, I sort of know what I'm doing. So obviously, let's go over the armour and let's see why I think this thing is a bit of a hold down beast. As, well, this video is going to show you, or uh, well, the replay is going to show you, and obviously the, a similar title in the actual video itself. So the whole armour is 63.5mm thick. On paper, it's pretty reasonable. I mean, you've got some bulges that help out and everything, but you've got some bulges that don't. Obviously, you've got plates such as this 38.1mm, which wrap around. This is a weak spot, so is the machine gun port, and so is just underneath the turret, which is actually quite a hard shot to get. But if you do, you get a single plate of 63mm armour, which will lead right to the turret ring and all three crew members inside of this turret. Now obviously you may be noticing a stranger turret design compared to a M4A4 because this is the T23 turret. The T23 turret was essentially the only way the US Army could put the 76mm into the Sherman. However obviously we have a 75mm so it fits like a glove. So obviously with it being a 70 or 75mm we still get to keep this turret for some reason. The rear and the sides are 63.5mm thick, fair enough it's not going to stop much, but this isn't about the side and turret armour, it's about the front armour. So you've got 88.9mm thick on the outskirts of the armour plate, the side of the turret is actually pretty well angled so you can block shots for the most part on this side. The next part is 98mm thick, again this will stop most rounds that come at it. And here's the big boy. 187mm of cast homogenous armour around the gun barrel and just near the breech. It is, it is impressively thick. Even a 17 pounder will have to think twice. Let's just say that. Now I'm not sure if there's any additional armour plates behind the actual armour plates that we do have, but I think there is an additional gun shield behind this um well, behind this mantler, I'm not entirely sure, because obviously with Gaijin's X-ray and everything, you can't really see. But to be honest, with the thickness of the main breach and everything, I don't think there is. Obviously, sides and rear are typical Sherman, 38.1mm. Yeah, this isn't really going to stop anything, so do not rely on things like side scraping, because, well, if anything, you're just making this easier to pen. But 
otherwise this thing is an absolute monster and i really enjoyed spading it obviously i'm not finished as i've already said i haven't got the smoke rounds i haven't got the tracks but the rest is pretty much just just miscellaneous because the gun's pretty accurate anyway with its 75 millimeter so and the reload rate's pretty decent as well now obviously stat card is subject to change because obviously i need to finish spading it but seven deaths Three air kills, 46 ground targets. Pretty dang effective in my opinion. But um, the main cause of my first few deaths was inexperience with the tank. I'm going to be truthfully honest. Um, I just didn't know how to play it. Because, well, the stock round is just 91mm thick or of penetration. And it's not great stock. And obviously I had to learn how to play the tank and I also had trash teams, as you can tell, by 50% win rate. But, for the most part, this tank has done me pretty dang well. Obviously the frontal plate is not to be relied upon, but for the most part, this thing is a hull down monster, as this battle is going to show you. Again, this is one of those one in a million battles that I'll probably never have again for a long time. But, this battle could not go to waste. I could not let this one slip past me. Simple fact. So in this battle, we're fighting the Allies, which is probably the best thing for this tank. Fighting the Germans can be done. It's just their 75mm and 88mm can punch through your front of armor, including the turret. For the most part, though, the British in the down tier tend to bring vehicles that don't have as much armor and or penetration. Obviously, you'll be fighting a lot of Shermans, you'll be fighting Chappies, you'll be fighting some Valentines even. And in the down tier like this battle, you are going to clean up. So in this battle, obviously, as you can tell, I do not actually have the, um, the spare retard. I don't even have the engine mods. And as you can tell, it is struggling. It does struggle up inclines like this. But once you get used to the way it drives, it can work reasonably well. I actually nearly tipped the tank there. But um, for the most part, you should be able to get this tank in a reasonable position and make this tank work over time, because that's what it really likes to do. It likes to get the hold out position and get that 75mm firing. Because, well, the penetration doesn't improve much from the stock round, but it's enough to deal with most targets that you'll see. However, not in an up tier. Up tiers are going to be your front trouble in this tank, and you don't have access to APCR ammunition. So again, shot placement is critical in this vehicle. I'm just going to turn down this engine sound, because it sounds way too loud for me. I, I don't know about you, but I'll basically re-explain in case you didn't hear me over the engine. Because, well, it's a 460 horsepower radial, and... The, the early Shermans always sound horrible, and with the volume being out of what it was, I'm probably just going to keep the engine volume there for now. So, to re-explain what I was saying, I essentially said um, that the 75mm does not have access to APCR ammunition, um, and for the most part, you will struggle in up tiers. Specifically against Churchills, um, You'll also meet a Jumbo from time to time. And, well, in fact, I haven't seen a Jumbo, but obviously it's a 4-0 tank. It's at a battle where we can see 5-0 tanks. First kill on that Valentine. And as you can tell, the turret face took that one. I can't remember what's down there. I think it's a Churchill. Yes, it is. There's an LVT there. I accidentally hit him in the ammo rack. Wasn't aiming for that, but I don't care. Second kill. And obviously... The Valentine's gun was insufficient to penetrate the front of the turret where he hit. And as you can tell, I I absolutely love this thing because of the way it was. Obviously, here's where the 75mm can be a bit questionable. Obviously, I've seen this M5A1. Obviously, I can't really see him through the bush. I thought, right, let's try and no-scope him. Bounce off the engine deck and bounce off the side of the turret. Like I said, once the steward gave me a side, this was pretty much a death sentence for him. 
I don't know why the Puma was not firing on the Stuart. I reckon his gunner got taken out or something, but he he was really struggling there, so obviously I had to lend him a hand there. So at this point, obviously that Puma's gone on repair. He's dropped smoke, or dumped smoke, should I say. And I'm just sat in one of my favorite spots. This is a very nice spot to get to. It's got great hold down protection. It's got good up firing arcs, especially when you remove some of the trees. And for the most part, you can just sit here indefinitely. However, I'm not going to. I'm eventually going to move up. Key word, eventually. <laughs> That's the trouble, like, the problem is that the battle can change at any moment. And the Sherman, or well, the Cash Sherman's mobility is questionable. It's good enough, it has a top speed of about 23 miles an hour. Its reverse rate is typical Sherman with just 3 miles an hour. So you're not going to be able to get out of trouble too quickly. Now, there is actually a pretty bad weak spot on this tank, and I've not actually pointed it out. The Commander's Cupola is not the weak spot I'm on about. You may see a small Cupola to the left of the 50 caliber machine gun. That is just 25 millimeters thick. And well, there's one target you're not betting. M4A3105. I met quite a few of these, yet it's a 2.7 tank, and people decided to bring it into an up tier. I don't know why. Cromwell here, he spots me, I spot him, I have the stabilizer, he doesn't, I beep to the trigger, fourth kill. Obviously there's another Sherman, I hit the additional armor on the side, not like it was probably going to pen anyway. He hits me in the turret front, and again, does jack all. Like I say to people, this turret front is just absolutely awesome. Because I'm in a holdout position, he cannot penetrate the front of the turret unless he goes for the weak spots. Which, there are two of them. Obviously the, the I believe that's the loader's hatch to the left hand side. That is a weak spot, even though that should be the same thickness as the commander's cabal from what I've been able to find. But, um, this tank obviously packs a, a pretty good punch once you get upgraded. It packs pretty decent armor, so it can protect against most threats that you'll see. And let's just say a lot of enemy tanks are going to be stronger than defend this thing when it's hold out. Not everything, M10s will slice right through it, especially if they aim properly. Um, the frontal plate can be penned by most German anti-tank guns, so just bear that in mind. Now one thing you will have to get used to is the muzzle velocity, but to be honest, I don't really have that many problems. Fifth kill, still got more to go, way more to go folks. Crusader screws up his shot, hits me inside the, the turret. He realizes I'm about to fire just a second too late, and I get my sixth kill. Valentine comes in front, hits the front of the turret, there's Jackal, and I kill him, number seven. We've still got more to go, folks. What, seven plus nine? There's your answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you don't know how to do basic math, then, well, I'm not saying it, but... I hope you never know. Some people might struggle to do math, so... Now here's where a weird bug happens. It's not this shot, I believe it's the next shot on this Churchill. Just watch what happens. Nope, it's the next one. I, it's either the third or the fourth shot. There you go. It hits the fuel tank. Goes, well, the external fuel tank store and goes straight through the armor without detonating or anything. Yeah, whatever, you get me inside anyway, kill number eight. <laughs> Again, two pounder, hits front of the turret, does nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if this tank actually goes up in BR because of this. Because of how well this thing can just sit here and not give a shit about most of what shoots at it. Because the T23 turret at this lower BR is just a recipe for disaster. Because you get this turret all down, there's not a lot that's going to be having you giving you trouble. Like, say, the German guns can, um, some of the American guns, such as the M10 76mm, and some other vehicles like Churchill Mark 7s and other vehicles like that. 
That shot was attempting to go for the gunner on the chappy. That's a nice little spot as well that he's currently using. I shoot him in the barrel. But I decide, yeah, let's go for the commander's controller. The commander's controller works, and I get killed number nine. That genie guy, I believe he's going to come back a few more times for a couple of more rounds. However, he's not going to end very well for him. Now, this is the position that really makes this tank work. So I'm sat, hold down. I can just sit here and I can... I've got the cards here. I've got the ace of spades in my hand. And, well, no one's pulled out. In fact, I, I don't remember cards. I, d I don't play cards, as you can tell. But the ace of spades is coming into its effort here. This M4A2 decides to completely stare at me. He goes for the truck. And, well, he just sits side on. He doesn't even try to move. Kill number 10. It's just, that guy's going to keep coming back, and I don't know why he even bothers, because there's not really much he could bring to the party that would give this thing a concern. Like I say, the M10 could, but that thing's got a slow turret. I will be doing a video on the M10 at some point, give you guys a hand with it, because I've noticed a lot of people struggling with it late recently. And again, he spawns completely side on. And well... I do hit him, but obviously the shell was coming down and it hits the track, but yeah, whatever. That's him dealt with, again. Kill number 11. I really don't get why that guy kept respawning, because, well, he was fucked, let's just say that. And there's obviously another M4, I'm looking around, and well, the truck lights him up. Tr the M4 is actually going to kill the truck with his machine guns. And then the Sherman just decides to sit there. Okay. Makes my job easier. Number 12. The Puma that was on our right from earlier on. Um, he has just died to a M4A3105. Obviously the 50mm on that thing is not capable of dealing with the M4A3 from the front. without going for the MG port. So... Now, but, now, obviously, I am firing the machine guns in first, so I know if he... If, obviously, he's alive, or well, he's at spawn protection. He keeps on driving. He should have been going into the rock area. There's like a... There's like a dip in the rocks, where he could have just sat there and shot at the planes of our team, because we do have one and nine up. But no, he just decides to just give me his side, and... Yeah, that's kill number 13. And if I remember rightly, that is the guy I literally just killed in that Valentine. Let's have a quick look. I didn't really look at names. Yes, it was. He, for some reason, decides to dump smoke, which, I mean, that is a... That would be a reasonable move. Just not when you go charging through your smoke, where I can see your dirt tracks, leaving yourself blind, and exposing yourself to my gun. Kill number 14. You can sort of see why I was laughing my ass off at this point in the battle, because I just felt invincible. And that's a fair assumption, obviously. Aircraft will obviously be able to kill you because of bombs. There are guns that can kill you, but at this point in the battle, the only real guns on the enemy team are the M10s, and they're down by the B and the C point, so they're not really a concern to me at the moment. Obviously, there's that 105 Sherman. I do know he's there, but obviously, I'm thinking maybe I could get a shot into the side of the turret. And this is where the wonderful reverse rate comes into play. At just three miles an hour. I mean, I can't really complain, but it would be nice to have just a bit of a faster reverse, is all I'll say. I was just checking that Sherman, making sure he's dead, because obviously, you never know with guys recently. And obviously, I'm trying to get an angle against this M4A3. Now, I'm going for the gun... Well, I'm going for the gun area. Obviously, the gun breach, preferably. But the ideal shot is to get a shot just to the left of where I'm hitting. Obviously, the front plate. That was a silly mistake on my part. And obviously, look at my ammunition. I've not got all that much left. So, I really do have to be careful here. 
obviously hit the front of the turret. That's not going to do anything. I was waiting for the C-34 to move, and he gives me just a slightest bit of pixel, and I'm able to penetrate to get my 15th kill. At this point, some poor bastard brings in a half track. I didn't even want to kill him with a 75. And it's animal again, but that's kill number 16, and that's the end of the game. Absolutely amazing tank. I really enjoyed playing it. I highly suggest people giving it a go. Like I say, you will struggle with some of the... Well, you will struggle with the up tiers, and you will struggle when it comes to the stock grind, because obviously the 75mm is not the best when stock, but once you get it upgraded like it is now, it is an absolute monster. But anyway, I will let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the m 4 175 w Highly suggest getting this tank before it gets either up tiered or nerfed, because, well, it's probably going to get one or two. And, well, I hope to see you all on the next one. Upcoming review... Well, I have plans to obviously review the Chinese M4A4, but I need to drag that out to get some footage for that. The AMX-13 DCA-40, again, need to drag that out to get some footage in it. And um, I'm going to be doing a guide on the M10 at some point. But anyway, I'll let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all on the next one.